As divided as ever, world leaders remain split over what to do about Syria, the issue that's dominating the agenda at the G20 summit in St. Petersburg. President Obama has had little success in winning broad support for military action, with David Cameron largely relegated to the sidelines. Well, our political editor Gary Gibbon has been talking to the Prime Minister, and more of that later. But Gary joins us now from St. Petersburg. They're having dinner in the palace behind me now, Krishnan, and Put uh, Vladimir Putin decided to put on the agenda there the issue of Syria. He had been holding back on whether to formally discuss it here, but I suspect he looked at the cast list and worked out that President Obama is going to be seriously outnumbered in the room. The Chinese have come out pretty strongly today uh, against military action in Syria by the United States. I suspect that both President Hollande of France and David Cameron in the room over dinner tonight will be chipping in on uh, President uh, Obama's uh, side, giving him support there, uh, and France, of course, giving him support in the battlefield as well. This is how the day went here at the old Tsar's palace. 90% of the world's wealth represented in one room. And the focus of these summits is usually money and how to make more of the stuff. But the Syrian crisis is at the front of many minds here, and President Putin has decided to make it part of the formal discussions. Are we ready, yeah? Before the talks, President Obama met the Japanese Prime Minister and rehearsed his support for direct military action against Syria. Uh, the use of chemical weapons in Syria uh, is not only a tragedy, uh, but also uh, a violation of international law that must be addressed. As the heaviest car door in the world opened, a stern-looking President Obama emerged. Trust between these two men is at an all-time low. Relations are so bad, this is the longest one-to-one -one chat they've diaried for these two days here. While they shook hands across the palace gardens, President Putin's spokesman was mocking how the US president was outnumbered here. As China's President Xi arrived, a spokesman warned that bombing Syria could knock the world economy. The UN Secretary General was expected to warn world leaders against military action tonight too. And for good measure, the Pope wrote a letter expressing his opposition to military strikes. President Hollande will have supported President Obama's arguments around the table tonight. And he'll be supporting the US militarily if bombing goes ahead. David Cameron, though, has given up on any hope of getting MPs to back military action and so will support only with arguments. Tonight, he said British government scientists had identified sarin gas on clothes and soil samples from the scene of last month's chemical attacks. Mr Cameron's demanding that the G20 backs more humanitarian aid for refugees from Syria and chemical weapons protection for civilians in the country too. An hour ago, the leaders strolled through the Tsarist palace gardens to dinner. President Putin's spokesman said he expected talks would continue on Syria and other matters well into the night.